StarCast 5, July 29th to 31st in Nashville, gearing up to be a huge event you don't want to miss. Amazing stage shows and live wrestling with shows from Black Label Pro, GCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and of course, Ric Flair's Last Match, which has an amazing lineup of talent from all over the wrestling landscape. Headlined by Ric Flair's Last Match, and you can follow the story leading up to the match over at Ric Flair's Last Match. Com. We've got new episodes Mondays at 6.05 Eastern. For tickets and more information, go to StarCast.com. How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is July 22, 2022, figure four, did, online.com. Did, 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 you, did you know that Jim Valley stole my opening line for tonight's show? He didn't steal it. He, he, he came up with it himself. But I, as soon as, as soon as Vince quit, I said, I'm opening the show the next show I do saying that Vince screwed Vince and and I go but you know what I mean it's gonna be hours before we do the show and someone is going to say that line and I just thought I don't know who it's gonna be and after a couple hours nobody did and I go okay then I got back home tonight and it was of all people in this world of the millions of people in this world it was my friend Jim Valley who I was in no contact with all day today and anyway um, I mean, it's like the, 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 the first thing I thought of when I heard that is like, that's the line after 25 years, man, screwed events. Well, so. Jim's going to have to be future endeavored after that one. No, but I, I will say, I will say that my, my story for today is that I was traveling the day that the first Wall Street Journal ca- uh, story came out, no I was traveling. traveling I was traveling the day that he stepped down as CEO and chairman. I was traveling the day the second Wall Street Journal came out, and literally, I was ten minutes out the door today, and I started getting texts. Holy shit! People were saying, "Yeah, you, yeah, you want to know me?" I, I thought I've got a couple hours before I have to do the update, and I have a lot of shit to do. So I left the house and I just said, I'm going to the gym and getting, and, and I didn't bring my phone with me. So I came back, you know, and then it was just like all of this stuff. And it's just like, you did it to me again. And I had all these stuff that I had to do tonight, which, which I didn't cancel, although perhaps I should have, but I didn't. And, uh, here we are. What, well, uh, quite frankly, he could have resigned on a Thursday. No, it, it was going to be the minute. Th- uh, you know, this was all perfectly timed. It was Friday right after the stock market closed because they didn't want, you know, I mean. That I was Friday making it, an observer deadline joke. But yes, obviously this was perfect timing in real life. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was going to be, it was going to be, if, if he was going to do it, he was going to do it Friday at, at, at 105 p.m. our time, 405 Eastern. Um, well, in case you're listening to this, by the way, and you don't know what's going on, Vince McMahon announced today that he was retiring. And uh, he tweeted and then he had a public statement, and then he had the most fucking bizarre statement that he sent to the wrestlers, yep. where he joked about his... Uh, I could actually probably find it here. Just read, but, just read it, or I, or, yeah. or I can get it for you. I got it I'm in my million pieces of paper around here. I've got it here as well. Okay. We're very well prepared for this right here. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, actually, I don't have it. But anyway, the point of it was he basically talked about how uh, his level-headed presence at Gorilla would no longer be around and how the that was wrestlers... A, that was meant as a joke, by the way. Of because, course, and the wrestlers needed to represent and blah, blah, blah. And then he finished the the email to the talent, to the talent, mind you, with a plug for tonight's episode of SmackDown. So uh, that was absolutely bizarre. Here's the email. This is what he sent to the actual talent. Okay. To all WWE superstars, as I approach 77 years old, OMG, am I really that old? I feel it's time for me to retire. I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing my passion, wisdom, and love of the business with you. No longer will you see the smiling, docile, level-headed calm presence at Gorilla every week. Your dedication to WWE will ensure that our company will continue to grow and prosper. Our organization is nothing without you. You are WWE's only natural resource chosen to perform in front of a global audience. You are all WWE global ambassadors. Carry the WWE flag wherever you go. Wave it high and proud and bust your ass to be all you can be as a person and as a performer. One other thing, I won't be with you, but I will be watching. Remember to keep your hands up, grab a hold, and sell. By the way, SmackDown airs live tonight at eight Eastern, seven Central. Yeah, which, I'm, which, which I must say, um, obviously that that was meant to get out because um, everyone, all the wrestlers, know when SmackDown airs. 
and you know half of them are there we're at smackdown the other half were at home you know watching uh probably pretty shocked at everything that went down it was a crazy it was it was the craziest day maybe in the history of the company among the craziest anyway um i, I you know I, you know what's funny about it too craziest. i wouldn't you say know what's funny about it too is the retirement of vince mcmahon is easily the biggest story of the last 25 30 years with the exception of the death of wcw and, and Benoit. In both well Benoit. Benoit was a a huge story like to the mainstream but as far as like ramifications throughout the industry it's the death of WCW and it's Vince McMahon retiring and, what and, the hell's going to happen and, when he's and, gone and, and, the, and the birth of AEW sure but the the irony of the two that i mentioned is that in the case of WCW nobody thought that WCW could ever fold and they did and nobody ever thought that Vince would step away from WWE unless he died. And obviously there are reasons yeah, for well, why for the he last couple away, of, but in la- fact, la- he did. For the, la- for the last couple of weeks, he, we all knew it was a possibility. Like, maybe even a good possibility that something would happen. And obviously this was forced, you know. Um, so, you know, and especially, you know, he had told the talent, like, two weeks ago, um, two and a half weeks ago. Well, actually, actually, almost three weeks ago now. So three weeks ago, he had told the talent in, in Vegas um, that. Uh, let me get. I could get you the exact wording in, among the millions of things I have here. Um, that he was going to always be here, no matter what. This was three weeks ago. <laughs> he told. Huh, he told how the about talent. that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, well, he's gone, and the new co-CEOs are Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan. Triple H is back as the, uh, I guess, VP of Talent Relations, or whatever his, executive, his EV, is. EVP executive of VP of Talent Relations. So John Laurinaitis appears to be history. Yeah. And obviously the big question going forward, mm-hmm. probably the most important question, really, and there's a lot of them, but uh, who is going to be the new Vince McMahon? Who is going to oversee all there's, creative? There, 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 oh, as far as oversee all creative, that's a really interesting question. Um, there's going to be a, a power grab. Now, tonight's show was was Bruce and Ed Kosky, but, but Paul Levesque was also there. And I guess he was the, from what I gather, he was the closest to being the Vince McMahon. Um, as far as he was the overseer tonight, whether that is you know, because he was there and Stephanie was there, um, whether he's going to be going on the road to these shows, you know, every Monday and Friday, uh, that could be asking a lot. But, you know, I mean, hopefully his health is like 100 percent or as close to 100 percent as it's going to be. Um, but that's still asking a lot, you know, for a guy who who, you know, nearly died. Um, so, yeah, there's a, a, there's so many questions, some of which are answerable and some of which time will tell. But the. You know, as it turns out, you know, I mean, there were the, the people who I was out with tonight are, are you know, pretty savvy business people here and, um, you know, with, you know, major companies and the boat, you know, two of them just said flat out co-CEOs never work, um, which is, was an interesting thing. And uh, the other one, one of them said that, uh, you know, whatever anyone says the guy who owns the most shares is still the guy who, in the end, has the power. And Vince, unless he divests himself, which I do not, you know, he has not done that, and I don't believe he is going to do that until there's a sale. And, of course, what does this mean for a sale? It it, it, it probably means, um, well, you know, the, sales, the, 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 the bit with the sale is, if the right offer comes, they were going to be sold yesterday, a year ago tomorrow you know the right offer didn't come i mean um would vince if vince pushed and said like lorenzo fertita you know when when, when ufc was, when ufc was sold this was not a situation of um you know um uh endeavor coming and going like lorenzo we're gonna make you an offer that you can't refuse it was Lorenzo waking up one day for reasons that, uh, you know, probably have never, never been discussed, uh, and just said, I built this thing. I'm tired of this thing. I'm tired of certain aspects of this thing. And I want to sell. Somebody lined up a bunch of bidders and they lined up a whole bunch of bidders. Um, so that's, that's what happened there. Um, so, 
you know, again, there's been nobody lining up the bidders that we know of. But, you know, if the offer came, you know, I mean, Vince was Vince. Vince has been willing to sell since 2016 and he saw the UFC offer at four billion. But nobody made him that offer. So, you know, whether this makes it easier or harder, I don't I don't know that question. But, you know. Everyone's talking about well the sale and this and that and and Nick was brought in to to facilitate the sale and you know that's a reasonable assumption you know there's there's all kinds of points. Well, that I Nick think that obviously that. I think part of it is it's going to all depend on the next six, twelve you know next two years if if everything continues along and the ratings are stable and you know everything is. Well-oiled machine without Vince, then I think that uh, you know people will still be interested in buying the company. If if he's gone, the thing collapses. Looks well, then collapse. that but would there be may something be, completely different. Now there may be a lot of power grabs. Um, in fact, I well, think sure, yeah, but I mean, and that's going to be interesting. I think you, at the at the end, you need one boss, and it's probably going to be Nick. I mean, it's going to be Nick on the business end, but on the wrestling end, you know, it's probably going to be Paul and Stephanie. And, uh, you know, that's just what it, you know, and will Vince be pulling strings? Um, you know, I've got to think he will. There's also the question is, will Vince, will Vince come back? I mean, I never say anything is final. Um, I mean, and a lot depends on the reasons he left are not going are, are not going to go away if he chooses to come back. But he could look at this and go, you know, look at Hogan, look at Flair, look at everyone, and it dies down. I mean, no one knows it dies down better than Vince. You know, he went through the Benoit thing. You know what I mean? Um, which was which was hell. And but in the end, it died down. And and um, you know, my I'm sh I I got to believe, you know, that there's ob obviously the investigation was probably not in his favor because if it was he wasn't leaving um will there be more stories there's always those rumors um you know time will certainly tell we know i mean we know of stories um and what they are you know i mean uh i mean again i think i think a lot of this is going to come out in the wash in the next couple weeks um you know but uh you know that th th there's there's uh there's so much more, um, but you know, it's like, I, I, you know, gone forever, um, probably. But uh, you know, I mean, it's like, don't don't be shocked with anything. This is pro wrestling. Look, Stephanie just left and got buried on the way out. She's the co CEO today. You know what I'm she saying? She left and got buried. Hunter was gone, and now he's back. And well, yeah, but he was gone. He was gone for health reasons. I mean, no, he was gone. He was gone. Well, as, he was uh, removed as his as the head of NXT. I mean, that was that was his role. No, no, and he wasn't. Uh, he was he, he was actually was, he was removed as the head of talent relations because they thought he was wearing too many hats. And then the NXT thing, he he was he was not removed as the head of NXT. He got he got sick and Sean took over. But um, the situation. I mean, he's his. He never had ultimate power. That was still Vince. I mean, those people, you know, people went over his head, Vince McMahon, to change the face of what this is, which does become an interesting thing because, you know, that was Vince's call, but it was also a Nick Khan call. Um, and what, you know, I think that the decision is where, what NXT, but they, you know, there can be a million things that happen, um, you know, including with NXT. Um, as far as like what's going to happen now? Well, I I would consider him being replaced at NXT and the whole NXT 2.0 and the revamp and the colors and I mean yeah, that, but that was, was but, but that was that was that that stuff was going to happen whether he he would have still been in charge had he not gotten sick but he but he you know the the the, the structure of what happened with NXT that that's Vincent um that was Vincent Nikon who just said like this thing's not working. And exactly. That's my point. Like, that's what happened. He was in the position of being the guy who was told, your vision isn't working here. Yes, he, We're going to yes, totally he, revamp this thing. That's true. Yeah. And, yeah, and right. now here he is back in a position of power. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he still would have had power there, but he wouldn't have had ultimate power. And he still doesn't have, I mean, he probably has more power with Vince gone, um, which, and it does become interesting because... You know, Nick is not going to be the guy who runs the creative end. He's going to be the guy who runs the business end. 
Um, so that, you know, that's all, all those decisions. That's an interesting one, too. I mean, do they, do they go back to wanting more experienced wrestlers or is this decision something that he's on board with? Um, you know, or, you know, cause, cause if this decision is something that he's n- not on board with, he, he's going to have, he's going to have power. His wife is a co-CEO. Of course, the other CEO, we know what the other CEO thinks. And that's right there. And then that's right there. The issue, that's, that's an issue. So, so who, who makes the call? Um, well, I, I, I believe from watching the old version of NXT when, when Hunter was in that position and comparing it to what we saw in the main roster and even watching SmackDown tonight. I mean, obviously tonight is still, you know, they, they rewrote portions of the show and everything like that. But, I mean, the commentary was a little more relaxed. There was nobody screaming at the announcers on the headset. The New Day was out there. They mentioned Ring of Honor. They mentioned the IWGP Tag Team Titles. Uh, Michael Cole was talking about the fans, and he actually called them fans. He didn't say the WWE Universe. He had the WWE fans. So even there, there were little things on the show that, that to me, made the show already feel more organic than it did even a week ago. And given, you know, Hunter's, he was willing to push guys that didn't have the Vince McMahon look and the Vince McMahon body and the whole, the whole nine. Yeah. He was willing to to look at the top stars on the indie scene. So I am hopeful that uh, we will see more of that and uh, less of this very, very rigid um, well, we, we, well, well the, you're, you're right about the rigid aspect in the sense of Vince always had that rigid viewpoint of who could be a top guy. Um, and he, he shared that with many people there. However, that doesn't mean that those people he shared it with are going to be the ones who wind up in power. So, yes, it could be that could go in many different directions directions as far as um you know it's and again it's too early to say anything that is but. true but he had personal weird quirks his oh, oh, his, oh the weird the, the weird the weird yeah, quir- can, the can weird. people start getting their names back can we talk about belts well, name, again name, 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 names back names back is, is a different type of a decision as far as like using the term belts i think that that one probably will will come back because um, well, I mean, the I names remember. was a Vince call when he decided that he didn't want whatever you know. Yeah, but that's guy, for that's for that's for trademark and merchandising reasons, and that could be. Yeah, but there's no reason that theory cannot be Austin theory. Um. Yeah, I suppose isn't. I mean, is he going to go to AEW as Austin? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, does I, that make I, a difference? I don't. I mean, I guess time will tell what we see, you know, going forward in that direction. But I mean, as far as I just remember a conversation from years ago when uh, Levesque had watched a boxing match, and you know the guys came out with the belts and they called it belts on the air, and all of a sudden it was like hey, they call them belts there. It's not like it's some regional pro wrestling thing that Vince was mad at. It's like. In the real world, you know what I mean. So it's like, so his his take on that was not calling them belts or or banning the word belts because it's it's got a connotation of regional pro wrestling was was ludicrous. Now we'll see if if you know that could be one of those things that changes. Um, and, well, my, you know, he had a guy in NXT that was named Johnny Wrestling. So I I find it hard to believe that with Vince, if Vince is truly out of the picture, oh, well, 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 calling well, no it, shots, that we're not going to be allowed to call people wrestlers and talk about wrestling. Well, well that 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 I would suspect. I I would strongly suspect because he never had an aversion for the word professional wrestling, which Vince did. Um, of course, Stephanie is Vince's daughter. You know, when he she was trained by Vince, so you've got that too. So there's just a lot of things that are, you know, a lot of different personality things that are going to come up. And I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, and 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 the other thing too is like, um, who, like, like, no matter what anyone says, I mean, Nick Nick could have been fired at any time, you know. But now, I mean, I'm not saying he couldn't be fired, but who's going to fire the, you know, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's like. If he doesn't get into a scandal, and I would strongly suspect he will not, um, who fires the CEO? Um, so that, um, you know, I mean, his his vision and direction and, and things as far as the business end is going to be very interesting. Um, you know, I mean, as far as everything goes, um, you know, he's going to be the ones negotiating the big deal, which is TV contracts and, and uh, you know, um, 
rights fees and Hulu deal and all of the stuff. Um, you know, the big financial stuff is Nick's stuff. But, I mean, as far as the wrestling end goes, um, you know, uh, it, it, it could be Paul Levesque after all. Um, partially because nobody else has really been trained for it. And they don't have anyone else, ex- you know, I mean, experienced at it. I mean, you got Bruce who's, been ex- who's got experience in it. You got Jarrett, you know, who does have experience for years doing it. Um, not necessarily successful, but certainly experience and, 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 you know, comes from a lineage and all that. Um, but I mean, as far as others, um, I suppose, I mean, that's pretty much it. Now, you know, is Gabe going to come back? Sapolsky? Um, you know, of course, what he did was, was very different because he didn't do a lot of, he didn't do television like Jarrett did, but Gabe did a really good job of, of booking, you know, at, at, at one point with Ring of Honor and everything like that. And he was, you know, part of the crew that was let go. Um, production wise, are we going to see changes? I mean, it was sure always. Sure, I hope so. It was always, you know, you, you know, like, yeah, it's like Kevin Dunn's situation. It was always said that when Vince is gone, Kevin would leave and Levesque would bring in his crew that he'd been grooming at NXT. So there's, is that going to happen? Um, is, but is, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of questions. I mean, as far as like the the Vince thing, um, it's been interesting seeing the coverage. Um, you know, I mean, everyone knows the reason that he's gone. Even, you know, it's called a retirement. I mean, obviously, in some way, shape, or form, he was forced out. I know, I don't, you know, it's, it's so stunning to see it happen. Um, you know why, but, and there's, there must be something, there's, must be something even more than what we've heard for it to happen. Um, because that last round in and of itself, there wasn't so much that was forcing him out that we could see the stock price didn't collapse or anything like that. So there must be something, whether it's again, whether it's stuff they know is happening or some, whatever it is, um, they felt that it was time to make the move. And the one thing I always thought with Vince was like, people think that Vince would want to kill it on the way out. I know he wouldn't, you know, um, you know, the only thing that was going to get Vince out was saving, you know, was is something that he believed that he had to do it for the good of the company. And I think that that, in the end, was the situation here uh, for whatever reason. Um, you know, and it's not, again, there was nothing that it, that is broken yet that has caused this great grief that we know of. We have not heard of span- sponsors fleeing. We have not heard of pressure from NBCU or Fox. Um, there might have been something behind the scenes, um, but and that will all come out at some point if that's the case. Or it could be, again, that there is more and, uh, you know, um, patterns and, and, and everything. You know, there's, there's, there's a, there was a lot there. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.